Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our webinar today. So today we're going to take a little walk through um, Circus. So Circus is a scheduling, task management, and collaboration application. Some of you may be new to Circus, and some of you might be users who've joined us today to learn a few things. And we also may have some people who know of Circus through Farmer's Wife, our parent company and sister product, but haven't had uh, time to look at it yet. So this will give you some um, ideas about what the product is about and the features that we have and see if it's it's something that might help you. So I'll quickly take you through just a couple of background slides and then we'll jump over to the application and have a look at what, what features we have there. So um, Circus is a product um, from the same company that brought you Farmer's Wife. Farmer's Wife is the parent company. We have two products. Farmer's Wife has been around for around 20 years and Farmer's Wife is the other product, also the name of the other product that we have. Uh, Farmer's Wife is uh, the product, is project management, resource management, uh, um, financial management software, which is is being used um, in lots of different industries, but primarily in, in the media industry. That's kind of the background of the company and the founders and that's, that's where most of our clients are, but it also used outside of, of that industry. Uh, we have offices in Palma Mallorca in Spain, which is the HQ. That's where I'm based. Uh, we also have offices in LA, in Denver, in the US, uh, in London. Um, also, we have development teams in Skopje, support teams in Stockholm and Warsaw. So we have quite a good spread um, across the globe in board. That's both uh, sales and support and development teams. So good, good spread across the world there. Um, Farmer's Wife um, has quite a big footprint. We have uh, 25,000 users of Farmer's Wife. So um, lots of clients out there using it for business critical operations um, for their their projects. And now Circus is is kind of the new the new uh, child in the in the stable, and it's our uh, task management originally started as task management and collaboration tool. And if I go on a little to the next slide, uh, so obviously the team here across uh, development and, and product development had a lot of experience around uh, project management. And then we started to see that people needed to collaborate in a different way. Uh, people were starting to use more like online collaboration um, and not just everything kind of, kind of scheduled. So it, it's a slightly different way to collaborate than you have in in Farmer's Wife, a little bit more around tasks and um, more online collaboration. And then we also partnered with a, a corporation in the US to work through that piece of work. So they were looking for a task management tool for collaboration for an, an internal um, media handling technical team. And we worked a lot with them. So initially we focused a lot on, on task management, um, on task assignment, on statuses, on collaboration. So lots of, of strong features there. Um, and we feel we have a really kind of uh, deep functionality around, around task management. And now we're looking in recent months and the current development that we're on with the product is more around project management, uh, some what we're calling for the moment simple scheduling and also project scheduling. And now we're getting into a little bit more the enterprise world with um, reporting and dashboards and exports and that kind of thing. Um, just a point about the name, we have a lot of <laughs> questions and comments. Farmer's Wife itself causes a lot of, of questions about the naming of the company, but also Circus. Circus has um, some Scandinavian origin, which is the origin of, of the founders of the company. Um, and yeah, it's it's the idea came from this idea of working together in, in teams or in tribes, which gave us the tent idea. And then we expanded it a little bit more to the kind of circus performance um, side of things. So that's how we, we came with the name. Um, but we do like our, our circus puns, which we'll come to later. Uh, so circus has, uh, uh, is built on a cloud-based service. So most of you who are using Circus would be using it um, on circus.com. You sign up and you have your own workspace, which is your own own private space to host your projects and your tasks. So it's a cloud-based service. Um, we also have uh, private cloud or on-premise options for enterprises where using a public cloud service is not an option. Um, we have native Mac and iOS applications. So those give you some nice native features with file management, also we have dark modes on both of those platforms. So some nice um, 
native tools there. And we have a full featured web client. So for those of you not on, on Mac or iOS platforms, you can still access all of the features um, from those web clients. There's no difference in the in the um, functionality. And we also have an Android app, which is currently in beta. So a full range of access there, um, making sure that everybody can can see and use all their features on their preferred, preferred platform. Uh, so uh, on our webinar today, I'm Michelle here on the left. Uh, we like our puns, so I'm the product manager <laughs> for Circus. I have at least 15 years experience in various IT roles, uh, both technical roles and also now this uh, project and product management role. I've been in Spain and therefore in, in Palma for three years working for Farmer's Wife and Circus. I'm clearly not Spanish. I'm from Ireland, um, but I relocated here a few years ago. And on the right, you see Jen. Uh, Jen will be our ringmaster for today uh, in our circus, and she will address some of your questions and feedback uh, later. Jen has been with us in Farmer's Wife for one and a half years and has three years experience in video production. She's based a little bit closer to, to most of you on this call in Phoenix in Arizona. Jumping ahead to the demo, so I'll take you through some um, some functionality of the platform today. I'm going to show it on the Mac application, but everything that you see here is available, as I said, on, on all of the applications that we have. Um, so let me jump over to the app. And here we are uh, in the Circus application. So on the left-hand side, I have my navigation menu where I can navigate through my pro uh, tasks, project, inbox, etc. We'll go through those individually later. In the center is my content viewer in this case with my task list. And on the right, I have a, an inspector where I can preview the item that's selected here. So th let's take a look at this task. This task um, where we're, we're, Joseph and I are working on together and we're reviewing some candidates for a position that we have in the company. It's assigned to both of us. I can change the assignee here. And if I assign it to a new person or add a new person here, let's add Anna to this task as well. Um, she will be notified by email, she will get a, an inbox notification to her platform inbox and she could also receive push notifications if she had the Mac or iOS app installed, installed and push notifications enabled. Uh, so when I assign it to Anna there, I might just want to mention her and say why I'm adding her to the task. Uh, let's say... I can send her this question over. Again, I'm mentioning her here and she'll receive a notification. So we have um, mentioning is another time when you would be notified um, about activity on a task. Also within the comments, I can insert files. Let's take a look at that. Uh, in this case, it's an image, which is a screenshot um, from the CV. And let's say, mentioned Joseph here. Um, so this is just a screenshot from the CV and I've pasted it into the comments so uh, he'll be notified and can react on that. You can also see that we have some reactions in, in the um, collaboration where um, Joseph has reacted to my comment etc. So we have some emoji reactions to help a little bit with collaboration. I can also attach files at the task level. So here I have the resumes attached. I can preview them here. I can also download um, and um, drag and drop them from there. I can also drag and drop files into the comments or into this file area. Uh, so let's create a new task so we can look at what that looks like. Let's say this is to book. And I'm going to create this task just for myself. So this is just a to-do. I put a due date of this towards the end of June. Hopefully I can do that. Uh, I can attach a file, but for now this is just a to-do. So I'll receive a notification uh, when any task I'm assigned to approaches its due date. So I create that task. It's now in my list. When I, I start working on the task, I can mark the task in progress here, or I can also, I have lots of options here on updating the task or um, changing the status. So let's change the status to in progress here. This prompts me for a comment, but I can skip it. And then when the task is done, it's the same. I can mark it as done here, or also I could have done it from up in the inspector. So the task now disappears from my list. And that's because I am filtering uh, here in the bottom, you see the filters and I'm showing only not done tasks. I can also show uh, filter by a different status um, and I can reorder my task 
a list, for example, I can reorder it um, by name or a useful one is to reorder by due date, which will then give you different sections for the upcoming due dates of the task. So if you're working through a task list, you can work on it from the top down. So going back to the list that I had. Also, I have these filters to change the assignee. I have some default filters there and I can go to more advanced filters as well to change that. Um, so uh, I can, uh, one thing I also wanted to show is that from here I can add from this list, for example, I can pin tasks here to my shortcuts. I can pin tasks. I can also pin projects and, and um, workspaces too. And also I can drop uh, tasks into folders that I've created here. So a nice way to kind of organize your work a little bit. Um, so that's the tasks. Um, then we can move on and take a look here at projects. You see a list of all the projects that exist within my workspace. I also have a personal project which is outside the workspace and that I can decide who to share it with. If a project is within the workspace, um, anybody with standard membership will be able to see the project. Um, so I'll go through a little bit later the different levels of access that we have. Um, but this is these are all the projects that I have. If I inspect any of those projects, you can see here the project has a color. Uh, it has a status, which is open or closed, a start and end date. It has a number. I can attach files and comments and everything on, on this um, specific project. Uh, so this is like a list view of the project. We also have a, a new feature coming, which I think will be in the update coming out this week or may already be out by the time you, you um, if you review this webinar after the fact. So look out for that on the App Store. If I switch here to the schedule view on the Mac app, I then see this view, which is, is a kind of a timeline representation of, of the start and end dates of all of the projects. So this is a nice kind of new view that we're working on. Um, so from here or from the list view, uh, I'm going to take a sample project that I have here, this online store redesign, which is kind of an internal development project. It's an example like that. So I can double click in here or I could have done the same from the list. And here I see all the information that I saw about the project in the preview and I see the comments and the files. Um, again, I can preview this file or, or download it from here. These are the members of my project and you can see that some of these members have roles uh, and this is really useful when you are assigning tasks because you can assign a task to not just to an individual but also to a role. Um, for example, if I have something that needs testing, I could assign the task to QA and both Claire and Jero here would be notified about the task. So either of them could pick it up and start to work on it. So the roles are quite a useful way of having that flexible assignment um, and lots of lots of different ways to use that. You can always also mention roles, as I mentioned, individuals in, in the task comments. Um, so these are the roles that exist for the project. And on the members tab, you could see the assignments uh, of each one. I've also created a special role for, for to notify everybody in the project. So this project also has some phases. And in this case, I'm using sub projects here for the phases. So I have a preparation phase, design, implementation, um, delivery, and some bug reports that go throughout the project. So if I go to my task list for this project, so still I'm within the project, and now I'm looking at the tasks of just this project. And here you can see tasks within each phase. Uh, different. Some of them have different statuses for different people. They're assigned to some, some of the tasks are assigned to one person or to a role or to multiple people and they can each have their own status. So if we take a look maybe at this sitemap design here, uh, it's completed by me and assigned to Jero. So I can here say, here sign off. I can send that over and he'll receive a notification and he can proceed. So this is um, this is a nice way to look at, at uh, tasks within a project. Uh, all of these tasks can be saved back to a task to a project template. And if you have projects uh, that have a similar task list, you can create a project template for that. And then each project that you create uh, will have those uh, tasks created and assigned to the roles or individual if you choose to. So we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, my project can also have its own schedule. 
so here in my project schedule, you can see some bookings associated with my project. Um, so these are, this is a way to manage the resources. Um, I also have, I have the resources of my project, which are split out by the roles they have. And also I have some non, non-people resources. So like this can be rooms or equipment. Um, in this example, it's, it's some rooms. Uh, and here I can see how those bookings are made across the lifetime of the project. And I can uh, work a little bit with the sub projects. I can move those around a little bit. I can change um, also the dates of these. If things go over a little bit, I can move out this a little bit. So here I'm in quite a, a wide view here for my uh, my month view. I also have week views and day views, and I can navigate um, and pan a little bit back and over through the project to see. So let's create a new booking here. Uh, let's go out to the month view again and create a new booking here for our QA team, which is just a little bit of a, let's say a QA review. View. And I'll leave Claire as invited here. It's associated with this project. Um, and let's add this booking. And then I'm going to also add my other QA resource here. So now those two people are booked, they will get a notification that there's a new booking for them. And that time will be kind of grayed out for other people. You see here that um, there are some little grade sections for some of the resources that I have. And that's because they're booked on uh, other projects that are not this one, or they have personal bookings, which I can't see. So this gray out is kind of an availability um, selector. So this is, is the schedule of the project. And we're working a lot in this area um, at the moment, developing a lot of these features. Shortly, we'll be adding some things like um, milestones and, and some other nice features that will help a little bit with this. So you can see that on the, on the booking, if I, if I select the booking here, I can collaborate with comments and files the same as I can on a task. So lots of um, nice collaboration there as well. And of course, being able to manage these other resources is quite useful. These resources are set up at the workspace level. So at the top level in the workspace, you set up what resources um, are available to book. So we'll look at that a little bit later as well. Um, as regards the projects, I mentioned earlier that uh, I'm just going to back, go back to the project list and I'm going to create a new Right, going to this list, I'm going to create a new project here and use a template just so you can see. So this will be a new trade show. Remember, I'll just show you what that looks like. So I have created this project template at the workspace level. You can save these project templates from existing projects to populate them, or you can create them from scratch. So this is a new trade show. I'm going to decide to invite these people. The start date of the trade show is far away from now, let's say November, let's say this is where our booth is. And hotel address to be C. So I can keep working on this um, as the trade show approaches. Let's create the task here. So here is the trade show. If I double click in, I see uh, all the information that was created. But if I go to the task tab or the sub projects tab, these are the, the Subprojects are phases that are part of the template, and these tasks have been populated for the template. So if I do, if you have projects that have similar structure with similar to-do lists or similar task lists, you can create a project template for those, um, and and they'll be created with with the correct assignments and the correct roles assigned. So here I'm assigning them to the role and then I can just go into the members tab and say in this role Kathy is the marketing person and Anna is the project manager and um, assign out the tasks like that. So that's a really um, useful uh, feature to have. Uh, so jumping on then to the inbox. So we talked a little bit earlier about the mentions um, and how that might work. If I go to my inbox here, I can see a little bit of the type of notifications that I receive. So I receive notifications when tasks are completed. Um, I receive notifications for replies to tasks that I sent. You can see this is the task we were working on earlier. And then I can click on those and see the, the preview of the task here in the inspector. So this is really useful. Um, sometimes if, if you're, let's say, a, a doer or a reactor to um, assignments or, or comments, sometimes people can just work in the inbox and here just keep going through the list of, of events that are coming in. 
and respond to them and assign them, etc. Um, the activity then is just like a digest of all the different things happening on the projects. And moving on to our, our schedule, um, when I go into the schedule tab here, I see all of the bookings across all of the projects that are in, in my workspace, in my, in my company. So here I can see some lots of bookings for the project that we just looked at, and then also some bookings for some other projects like this, this in-store drop project. Um, and here I can see the availability across all of the the team members that I have. Uh, I can also uh, do some bookings here, which are kind of at, at workspace level. So let's say for Anna here, I'm going to book out some vacation time. And then this will come as unavailable to other projects. Let's just pick a nice color here. I'm not going to associate this with any project and it will just book it out as vacation. So anybody looking at this schedule would see it. And she'll be grayed out in in the various projects associated with that. Um, I can here, as I as I saw with the other ones, I can resize or move um, bookings. I can reassign them to other people, and similar to what I can do at, at a project level, um, I can add people to bookings that I already have. Um, and then, yeah, obviously at at this level, a little bit more the same the kind of panning and zooming options that we had had above so here i'm looking at the kind of high level view but again i can zoom down into to weekly and daily views um and navigate a little bit here so this is our overall view for all of the projects um these are all of the bookings that are in my workspace so this is the area where we're we're working a lot um from a product development point of view at the moment um also, I wanted to show you a little bit about requests. So requests are associated with tasks. So you can think of this as a kind of portal to gather a new task requests. So you saw that you could create tasks ad hoc and assign them to different people. You saw that you could create tasks in projects if you're a member of that project. But the request is like a way to um, channel incoming tasks. So this is a little bit like you could think of it a little bit like a ticketing system, but really a way to to gather um, incoming requests to the team. So some examples here, um, there might be bug reports or feature requests, and these tasks will have some specific custom fields. So you saw in the earlier tasks that we created, it was quite simple, just due date, um, and assignees and priority, but here we have some other custom fields that, that you can fill out. So I'm going to take a, uh, a more technical example here. In my technical services, I have some requests that I offer here. These are tasks, but they're this is like a, a, a channel for creating new tasks. So let's say here uh, I'm still logged in as myself, and let's say I'm, I'm a producer and I'm sending a task through to the technical team. Um, this might be something that I normally do in email or in the information's gathered in a Google Drive document or, or in, in some kind of sheet. But here I'm going to uh, submit it this way. So this is for my project X, Y, Z. So I don't have any control here in this task template. This, this is created from a task template. The project is defined, the subproject and the assignee. So I don't have any option about who that uh, how that task is assigned, but I just need to fill in the the um, information here. So here in this path to source, I can link to a file. Let's take uh, an example here. This is just a local file, but you can imagine that this file path, this clickable file path could be your local file server. I can also select some technical information about the output of this file, the frame rate, the format here and all of this these options that i see and these values are totally configurable at the workspace level so this is something that you need to figure out for your own business processes what kind of requests you could offer here and what structure they would have and what options you could select so this is just a kind of simple compression request i also have some uh, an option here for captioning required and this is a a kind of automation on the workflow. So if I select this, it will also assign a closed captioner to this task. So it will also assign it to that team. So it's a, a little automation and we can look at later. Um, this is a little test field here. So this is whichever camera I used. 
and I submit this request. So now you can see that it also added the closed captioner to the team because I to the task because I selected this. And anybody with this compressionist or closed captioner role in this project will now be notified about this task. So just for uh, to show the full workflow, I'm going to jump over to the Mac to the web application where um, let's see. So here's the web application and here I'm logged in as Joseph and Joseph has the role of compressionist. So Joseph will in his inbox will have received a new notification. If he had the Mac and iOS app would have received a push notification. He can select this task here and he can see all the information that he needs. He can edit it because he's he's assigned to the task. And let's say he wants to start working on it. Say this task is in progress and he can say just starting on this today. Updates the status. Also on this uh, type of task, I have a, some custom statuses. So he can also set the tasks to some of those custom statuses which are provided. So let's say he clicked on the link that I sent him and it doesn't work. So he can put the task on hold and say, um, can you check? So here's where the kind of history of the task and the collaboration becomes really useful because you can see that the task is on hold and, and then you can see here a little bit why it's on hold. Um, so jumping back, so this is Joseph in the Mac in the web application. So jumping back here to my, I have my um, my do not disturb on, so I didn't receive a, a little push for that. Um, but here you see this feedback to me in my inbox because I'm the requester, and he's asking about the file path. Let's say I go fix it. I can tell him. Uh, can send it back to him. He can start again and we can see when he takes the, the task off on hold and he continues with it. So this request workflow is, is something really useful and is it's the technology behind it is what we call task templates. Um, so a few of the features that I've now shown are things that are set up at the workspace level. So here in my workspaces as an admin I can this is the company workspace that I have. This is like my top level. Let me click into this and then I'll be able to see some information about the workspaces of type group. I have a, a storage limit which is across all of my workspace and I have some options here about using roles or task numbers. This project membership indicates if uh, you have some you have additional controls at project level. So for example, if someone is added to the workspace, if they're added to all projects, or if you have um, some options to to only add people to projects or manage that. Within the team, I have, this is where I invite people to my workspace and set up the roles. These groups are like um, groups of people that you can easily add to a project. So similar to an active directory group. So I could create a new group, which is my web and QA. Let's say I often want to add them together. And in there, I could add the people that I regularly use in that role. And then I can easily add those to any new projects, let's say, with their roles as well. So jumping back up, back up to the workspace level, this is a list of all my projects. So you've seen this before. Um, and then we have the templates. So this is where all of the templates that you've looked at were created. So let's go to the one that we looked at specifically, this compression request form. If I double click in here and in the info tab, this is where it was set up, which project those tasks would be assigned to. These are the rules, um, which role it would be assigned to. I, I can select different roles. Uh, who could edit the task after it was created. We also have an approval workflow here, which means that we could have set up that this task needed to go to a project manager and be approved before it was assigned to the compressionist. So this is an uh, approval step and there's some automation around that, which can be kind of useful for requests that need some approval like security requests or vacation requests that need some approvals before they're submitted. Um, this is some information about how it's displayed on the on the request page. But here in the fields is this is where the real powerful stuff is. So these are the standard fields. 
pecking, even the standard fields, I could, could show or hide them. But down at the bottom, these are my custom fields. So I have a path, the target. If I want to add a new, let's say, let's just update one of these here. The ease, I can easily add a new option here. So social, let's say, uh, let's say I add a new option here, which is, So I, by just adding that there, the next time that someone creates a task, that, that option will be selected. Let's say I add a new one, which is um, uh, air date, which might be something useful. I can select different types of fields that I can add. So all of these different types, checkbox and dates and duration and file paths and all of this. So let's say this one is a date. I can include the time or not. I create that now. Uh, these are the custom statuses that we saw. So waiting for media, captioning. Let's say I add one which is called compression. Or let's say add one which is QC. Helpful. I can set a uh, color for that. Create a new status. Um, so here you see I've updated my task template a little bit. And if I go back and open that request again. Uh, you can see I have my new option here, the error date, and when the task is created, if I can just create one quickly, you see I have new options here for QC in progress. So going back to my workspace, uh, that's a little bit how the, the task template, so really powerful um, features there. Then the project template, um, this is the project template that we used earlier. When I navigate into it. It has a structure the same as um, the projects, but here I have some de default description of the project. These are the custom fields that you saw when I created the new project. This uh, project has one standard member and I can add when, when the project is created, at least that person will be added. It has sub projects and it has tasks and I can modify this um, so that each new project created will have a different structure. Um, I also can have booking templates and they would have a similar structure to a task template so they can have specific custom fields um, or colors uh, you can select that that those bookings would have a specific color like this. Um, resources, this is where I added the resources which were not uh, not people. So everybody who's in my workspace is a resource that I can book, uh, but I can also add non-people resources and I can add um, I can add a, an avatar for those and they will then appear in my schedule as things that I can book. I also have resource categories, so let's say I can have resource category, which is a room. I could have equipment. And the resources that I have here can be part of those categories. So let's say this is part of my rooms as well. Um, and when I go back to my workspaces, or when I go back to my schedule, sorry, here you'll see now these have been dropped into a new um, section called rooms and this new suite that I added is still in this resources one. Uh, so just jumping back to my workspace. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to look at was the triggers. So the triggers is like the automation part. So this is uh, where you can add some uh, powerful steps. So if this, this works um, based on the content of a task. So for example, um, in the case that we have here, it's assigned. It's assigning the captioning team if captioning required equals yes. This is what we saw in our request workflow. So here are my conditions. If captioning required equals yes, then assign the task to close captioner. So let's have a look at what that looks like. I could have other options like notify a certain person if that is true, or I can have uh, quite a complex email structure to send an email um, externally containing some of the task information when some uh, condition on a task is met. So we just had that captioning required equals yes, but there's lots of different things like based on the value of, of the task status, the due date, the assignment. Um, you can have 
whatever, if the target is social, then notify the marketing team, this kind of thing. You can set up some conditions like that. If the task is critical, then notify the team leader, that, that type of thing. So you can set up some automations. So you can see that the workspace is where you invite all your team, set up all the templates, um, any resources that you can schedule, uh, and also any automations that you might have. So quickly, I wanted to show you before I finish uh, on circus.com. Uh, we have um, some details on, on the pricing. The pricing uh, for the, the circus.com version that we just showed uh, is um, 13 euros 50 per member per month when billed annually and 15 euros per member when billed monthly. Um, but you can also sign up for this free plan, create a workspace with up to three people and use it for free with some um, limitations on file storage and, and member management. But basically you can use all of the features that I showed today for that small team indefinitely for free. But if you want to get um, some enhanced support, some um, additional member management, some extra uh, file storage and also to invite more of your team you need to upgrade to this pro plan if you uh, are interested in some other options some private cloud or some on-site bespoke options please contact us and and we'll take a look at that for you to provide some bespoke pricing uh, but also I wanted to show you the tutorial videos here so on circus.com we have lots of videos with um, details on the features that I discussed and each of those shows you um, how how those features work probably in much better than I did today. Uh, so jumping back quickly to our um, slides that we had, um, for the uh, development that we're working on at the moment, the product is very focused, as I said, on, on scheduling. So we're adding some uh, additional scheduling for sub-projects and al also support for project milestones. We're working on a um, more advanced search, which will then allow you to export um, uh, as a CSV or to Excel, some details on, on task statistics or utilization of resources and also showing those in, in a dashboard with some nice pie charts on on completion and, and utilization and whatever metrics are important to you. We're also working on enhancing the farmer's wife integration. We do have integration between our two platforms and for now if you create you can set up that your projects in farmer's wife will create uh, a project in circus so that project can use a project template and have all of the tasks populated and you can have a little bit of data flow back and over on the number of tasks completed. But we are enhancing that. And the idea is that further down the line, we will support um, perhaps showing the farmer's wife uh, bookings in the circus timeline and also time reporting in circus, which might flow back to farmer's wife um, for financial impact. So we're, we have that in the roadmap as well. Also on the task and collaboration side, we're looking at subtasks and dependencies. We see a lot of use cases where where um, those features would be very useful and also expanding a little bit what we've done on, on Kanban and boards. Uh, I didn't show today, but on the web version, um, the list of tasks that I showed in the project can be viewed in a board view and you can drag and drop between the statuses. Um, so uh, you can take a look at that on the web, but we would like to expand it a bit more to make those boards shareable and to be able to build them up um, as well. And for some follow-up after um, the demo, you can get in touch with us with any questions or queries you may have at our support address, support at circus.com. Here you have um, my contact details and those of Jen as well. As I've mentioned, we have the tutorial videos on, on circus.com. And if you want to uh, download or sign up for the apps, you can download from the Mac App Store for free. Uh, the Mac app on the iOS uh, app store, you can get the iOS app. You can sign up uh, and get lots of more information on circus.com. And also if you're an Android user on the Play Store, if you search for circus, you'll find our Android app, which is in beta.